the doctor was concerned about the possibility of esophageal atresia, how would he make a diagnosis? So the diagnosis is made pretty much at birth in the nursery. What they would do, the first thing they would do, is they take a tube, uh, an NG tube we call it, or an OGT. What that is is it's a small tube that you put into the mouth and try to go down into the stomach with it. In a normal patient, a normal baby, if the tube goes through and into the stomach, you take an x-ray, you would see it in the stomach, and you get contents out that would be that consistent with gastric contents, stomach contents. However, an esophageal atresia, when you go to put the tube down, it doesn't go. In fact, it may even double up on itself. So when you have that problem, what you do is you get an x-ray, and on the x-ray, you look, and what does you see? You'll see normal heart, normal lungs, but you look at two things. Where is the NG tube? And the NG tube, or OGT, we usually put it through the mouth in newborns, is actually curled up in a little pouch on the top end of the chest x-ray. And then you look very carefully at the abdomen. If you see air, you say to yourself, wait a minute, if the esophagus tube is blocked, and we see that because the tube that we put in is crinked, then how did the air get into it? So we then figure that there has to be a communication between the mouth and the stomach because there's air in the tract of the digestive tract. Therefore, we make a diagnosis that there's a communication between the trachea, the air tract, and the esophagus, the digestive tract. That element is called a tracheoesophageal fistula. A fistula means a communication between two things. If we see no air at all in the stomach, then we say the patient has what we call a pure esophageal atresia, which just literally is a discontinuation of the esophagus without anything communicating with it. So there is no communication from the, from the breathing tube. It's a pure esophageal atresia. Almost 88 to 90 percent of the time we'll have a tracheoesophageal fistula with a proximal or front part of the esophagus that's blocked and a connection from the trachea down to the stomach. About 5 to 7% of the time, we'll have what we call a pure esophageal atresia, which is just a blocked esophagus without any communication at all. And there are other variants. The next, next one is an interesting variant where there is a connection between the trachea and the esophagus, but neither are totally blocked. And it's, it forms like a little H or a little N shaped lesion that you can find in the neck. The other connections are much less prominent, less than 1%. So 